Hey guys, today we will be discussing how Metal CVP library works under the hood. I decided to split this video in two parts. Uh, in the first one, we will look at the official getting started documentation from Apple and discuss some of the library highlights to hopefully bring more context to you guys. And in the second part of the video, we will actually get our hands dirty and look at the actual source code of the library and see what it really does. With that, let's get started. In the highlight section of the Getting Started guide, Apple shared some of the details on why using the library adds low performance overhead, and I want to look at them more closely. First, no usage of wrapper containers that require additional allocations. To understand this point, we need to have some background knowledge about Apple frameworks. As you can see, their frameworks have a layered structure at the lowest level, we have the core foundation framework, which is written in C and provides APIs for interacting with operating systems at the lowest level possible. As you can probably imagine, these APIs are not easy to interact with, and therefore there is a set of higher level frameworks built on top of it. Those are Foundation, Quartz Core, Metal and Self, and many others. They are primarily written in uh, Objective-C and in fact from what I have seen it feels like the majority of Apple's internal code is written in Objective-C actually. Then Apple introduced Swift language at some point and of course since most of their frameworks were already implemented in Objective-C they had to design Swift to be interoperable with Objective-C so that they could use all the Objective-C code by calling it from Swift directly. Okay, uh, this is really nice bit of trivia, but Dima, how does that help me understand that point about Metal CPP that we started talking about? This one. With our newfound knowledge of Apple frameworks, we can understand that this point actually means that we can call original Objective-C implementation of Metal APIs from C++ directly, much like we can do it from Swift. How is it possible? Well, first of all, both C++ and Objective-C languages are based on C. Under the hood, they are the same language. Uh, they are different in how they implement object-oriented paradigm, but if you had a pure C function in C++, you could easily call it from Objective-C and vice versa. As long as that specific function was written in PUC without any C++ or Objective-C specific code leaked into it. Does it make sense? Well, we can actually take this concept even further. If I had a header written in PUC, which contained declaration of some function, and that function was implemented in Objective-C, then I would still be able to call the function from C++ code as long as this bridging header here is written in pure C. Do you see how cool is that? And that is exactly how Metal CPP library operates under the hood. We don't need to allocate any new object on C++ side, since we can directly do any manipulations with them as we need directly in Objective-C runtime using this C compatibility layer. And in the second part of the video, we will actually look at how that works in code. Next point I want to talk about is this one, no measurable overhead compared to calling Metal Objective-C headers due to inlining of C++ function calls. What does it mean? For this one, we actually need to take a look at some code. Here is the project from my part 1 video on building a 3D game engine in Metal CPP. The link to that will be in the description below if you want to follow along. Now, let's look at this uh, draw method here and in particular at some of the Metal API calls. For example, this one. Let's uh, look at the implementation. 
So at this point, we will not look into what this method actually does, but we are just interested in what it returns. If we follow along to see what this macro resolves to, we will see that it resolves to this code. And as a quick refresher, you need to understand that macro are being resolve, resolved by simply pasting whatever they map to in place of the actual macro. So for example, this particular code will be simply replacing this macro definition here. So in the actual code, you will have this. And as we can see at this inline keyword, instructs C++ compiler to inline the C++ function call. What does it mean? Each function call adds a frame to the stack and adding a frame adds a little overhead. Inline keyword tells compiler to replace the function call with the code of the function itself so that it won't be necessary to create a new stack frame. Now, you might argue that the overhead of adding a frame is almost insignificant and you will be right. However, in this method call, we only make 13 calls to Metal APIs. And in this very simple app, we only call this draw method once. So the overhead is really insignificant. But in uh, more complex applications, we will be calling this method every frame, ideally 60 times per second. And we will have many, many times more Metal API calls here than the 13 of them that we have right now. And in those situations, the compound overhead of non-inlined method calls would be much more noticeable. That is why inlining the calls helps to reduce overhead of using the library even further. Now let's look at the source code of the library. First of all, in this um, generate the implementation section of the docs, there are instructions that we should define three different macros to generate the implementation. What does that really mean? Back in Xcode, let's remove one of the macro definitions and see what happens. When I tried to build the project, I got a number of errors. Let's look at, let's say this one. It says undefined symbol located in this MTL private selector namespace. If we go to the source code of the method call, we can see that it returns basically a result of execution of this object sent message. And as a second argument to that method, there is some macro. And this uh, symbol name is exactly what this macro uh, resolves to. All right. There is some symbol, but why is it undefined? And it's not even clear where that private selector namespace is because in this file, we are just in MTL namespace. And so most likely those uh, private selector namespaces, they are located in some of those include header files. And so if we look at this MTL header bridge and Scroll, scroll down a little bit, we actually find that namespace where the symbol is supposed to live. And we see that this namespace has a bunch of macros again, and we interested in command buffer something. So this macro should be resolving to this symbol that is currently undefined. So now let's try to see what this macro should resolve to. So in this MTL private HPP header, we can see this piece of code. It will only be resolved if this MTL private implementation is defined. And as you might remember, this is exactly what we commented out in our renderer class. So somewhere here, we should have the answer as to why we, we got this error. Now, 
As you can remember, we had this MTL private dev cell macro. And as you can see here, inside of this block, there is uh, this macro being resolved to this thing. Let's copy it and paste it uh, next to the macro itself. Actually, let's copy the entire thing. Okay, as you remember, when resolving macro, we just simply paste things in place of that, right? So in our case, accessor is common buffer and symbol is common buffer string. When this macro is resolved, what we will get is this. So we will get this here and in place of symbol, we will get this string. This cell thing and MTL private visibility, and we need to resolve them before we can truly analyze what this line of code means. I will spare you some time and tell you what this MTL private visibility resolves to. It resolves to this piece of code. This attribute defines visibility of the symbol and it doesn't affect how it works in any way. Therefore, we can simply ignore it moving forward. Now, more interesting is this cell. As you can see, it is in fact just a pointer to some objective C selected. So this is the final version of the statement that we get after the macro is being resolved. And if we just ignore this uh, visibility attribute, we can see that SK common buffer is essentially a symbol name this is its type and uh, we get um, the value by executing this method here. And for now, we don't understand what this uh, method does and what this Objective-C selector really is. But let's uh, fix our implementation and bring back that um, macro definition that was required in the documents. Then, Let's run the application and try to debug the internals of the library. Okay, so now I'm running the code and I put a breakpoint in this uh, common buffer method here that we were calling from our draw call. Let's go into this send message method. So as you can see, there is a different um, code uh, executed for different architectures. Uh, I am currently on ARM 6040 architecture, which is M1. And so this means that this uh, part of the code will be executed. So if I jump to this uh, breakpoint here, and if I just bring that old statement that we got earlier, now we can see that actually this selector is simply a string. And so this Objective-C selector type must be simply an alias for string. And essentially what happens here is that when we call the cell register name, we pass common buffer, it does something and then it simply returns the same common buffer string that we passed to it. It's interesting. I actually found a very nice Stack Overflow article which kind of goes into detail what cell really is and what the cell register name method is doing. And it even has this link to some Apple internal source code where you can see actual implementation of the cell register name. I will leave the link in the description if you wanna look at it more closely. But essentially what happens when we call cell register name method is we do some sort of in initialization that will enable us to call the common buffer method inside Objective-C runtime from C++ following that pattern that we discussed earlier. As you can see here, we return another call to Objective-C runtime where we pass some parameters. So we already know that our selector is simply the common buffer string and it's clear that it's simply the name of the method that we wanna call and P object is as you can see a capture mtl command q pointer type we passing the object 
which is command Q and we pass the name of the method that we want to call on that object which is command buffer and we also pass ax but it's um, there are no ax for this particular call and so with that if we go back we can now see that this call is essentially reaching out to Objective-C runtime, sending the pointer to command Q and asking to execute command buffer method on our object. And actually, as you can see, that is exactly what we wrote in C++. When this method will be executed on Objective-C side, we get back the pointer to command buffer created by Objective-C code. Now, this is all well and good. We here in C++ can create all the objects that we want inside Objective-C runtime, but the elephant in the room is memory management, who is responsible for all those objects that we are creating. And according to Apple, as they shared in one of their WWDC videos. If a method starts with alloc new copy mutable copy or create, then you will be responsible for delegate memory for that object. And if method's name don't start with this keywords, then Objective-C runtime will take care of that for you. Let's see how that applies in our code. In the renderer's constructor, we create a new common queue object and the factory method starts with new. That means that we are responsible for the allocated memory for that object and that is exactly what we do in the destructor. Notice that we don't use delete keyword because delete only deals with objects that were created on heap by C++ runtime, whereas in our case the command queue created uh, by Objective-C runtime and therefore we have to use provided release method to ask Objective-C runtime to deallocate it. And so a different example, see how we create command buffer by calling this command buffer method. And since this method doesn't start with any of the keywords that I mentioned earlier, we don't have to uh, deallocate it. Uh, Objective-C runtime will take care of that for us automatically. And that's all I had to share today about Metal CPP library. If you like the content, and please subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think and what you would like to see in the future videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon, bye.